Hello everyone, what's going on? It's M10 here back with another Terraria 1.4 Journey's End tutorial and in this video I'm going to be going over every single item that you can get from Blood Moon Fishing. So what is Blood Moon Fishing? Well, Blood Moon Fishing is a mini event sort of game mechanic that you can do when a Blood Moon occurs. You just fish in a random pond and when you fish in a random pond you have a chance to actually fish up an enemy similar to the way you can summon a Duke Fishron boss. So the best way to know if you're about to fish up an enemy is to use a sonar potion and if a sonar a potion, well if the text appears red then you know that you're about to fish up an enemy. But very quickly before I continue with the video I just want to say some of my videos recently haven't been hitting the sub boxes properly so I, all I ask is that you please smash that like button and leave a comment down below for the YouTube algorithm so that this video has a better chance of reaching sub boxes to everyone. I would greatly appreciate it if everyone could do that. If this video could hit 2000 likes, I would be blown away. Thank you so much. Anyway, back to the video. So there are a grand total of five mobs that spawn from the Blood Moon fishing event. Two of them are available to spawn pre-hard mode. They are the Zombie Merman and the Wandering Eyefish. Meanwhile, in hard mode, on top of the Zombie Merman and Wandering Eyefish book, which will spawn as well, you have the Hemo Goblin Shark, the Blood Eel, and the Dread Nautilus. So let's go over all of these mobs in a little bit more detail. The Wandering Eyefish does 35 damage. It has 300 hit points and a defense of 18 and this is on classic terraria mode so the stats will be scaled equivalently based on what mode you're playing in the zombie merman does 40 damage it has a max life of 400 and a defense of 20 so a little bit stronger but also it can't fly around like the wandering eye fish moving on to the hard mode enemies we have the blood eel and this is a massive step up from the pre-hard mode enemies. It has a similar amount of health to like a, a little mini boss with 6,000 HP. And think of this enemy as an equivalent to like the Wyvern or something like that. The damage it does, well, the bloody ill head will deal 90 damage, the body will deal 60 damage, and the tail will deal 50 damage. So Try and aim for the Blood Eel's head because the head has zero defense in comparison to the body's 30 defense and the tail's 40 defense. Moving on to the Hemo Goblin Shark and well this is a very fast creature. It's super fast on the water, super fast on land, it spits projectiles and stuff. It's quite a crazy crazy thing. So the Hemo Goblin Shark deals 70 damage, it has a max life of 5,000 hit points and a defense of 30 once again classic mode stats so these get scaled accordingly depending on what mode you're in and finally the dread nautilus now this is the most powerful of all of the blood moon fishing enemies and originally it was expected that this would actually be a boss but like the ice golem for example this thing actually isn't classified as a boss it doesn't have a boss health bar and it doesn't drop a trophy or a relic in master mode so correction to all of the times i have called this a boss or a mini boss so the dread nautilus deals 55 damage it has a maximum life of 7000 and a defense of 24 as one of the attacks, it spawns a blood squid, which you can see on screen now, and these have a max life of 1,000 and deal 60 damage. So kill the Dreadnought as quickly before he spawns these things. Okay, so those are all of the Blood Moon enemies. Now I'm going to go over all of the unique items which each of these creatures drops. Okay, so the first item I will be discussing is the Bloody Tear. Now this is an item that drops from any mob in the Blood Moon, not just fishing ones, and you use it to summon a Blood Moon on a regular night. Okay, so moving on, we have the Advanced Combat Techniques, and this is actually the only item that you can just fish up without killing an enemy on a Blood Moon. And it's a consumable item that buffs your NPCs. So even if you have multiple of this item, you can only use it once. 
However, when you use it, it increases the defense of town NPCs by 6 and attack damage by 20%. So it's a nice little bonus that you can give, especially if there is a Blood Moon and your NPCs need to defend your town. Okay, so when you are Blood Moon fishing, what you want to use is the Chum Caster Fishing Rod. Now, this item is dropped by either one of the pre-hard mode Blood Moon fishing enemies, and it has 25% fishing power. However, the Chum Caster, as the tooltip suggests, has an increased chance to fish up enemies during a Blood Moon. So, despite being an okay fishing rod, uh, when you're outside of a Blood Moon, this is the 100% the best one to use to get the most enemies fished up during a Blood Moon. From here, I have to discuss Chum Buckets, which are a consumable item that gets tossed in the water and it drops from any enemy fished up during a Blood Moon. So a Chum Bucket will last for 10 reels of the line. So after you've fished up 10 different items, even if the line breaks, it will disappear in the water and the effect of the chum bucket is that it will increase fishing power depending on the amount that's in the water. Now this won't appear on the fishing power stat on your cell phone but a single bucket will increase fishing power by 2%, tossing in another bucket will increase the fishing power by 4% and tossing in a third bucket will increase fishing power by 7%. Any more buckets thrown in after that will not increase your fishing power. Up next we have the Blood Moon Monolith, which is a visual item that drops from the Dread Nautilus. As you can see here, it toggles on the visual appearance of the Blood Moon, changing the water, changing the grass colour, and changing the general colour of the scenery to that that matches a Blood Moon. This will also work during the day. I did test this out, it doesn't affect enemy spawns and you cannot fish up enemies whilst this thing is active. It is purely a visual item that can be used to make your world look uh, like a Blood Moon for a small radius. So I could definitely see this being used by builders on many occasions. As you can see there, it has a limited range as well. Okay, so now on to the weapons. The Blood Rain Bow is dropped by the two pre-hard mode Blood Moon enemies and it works as a pre-hard mode equivalent to the Daedalus Stormbow, turning any sort of arrow into a blood arrow that falls from the sky. However, this is far less accurate than the Daedalus Stormbow. As you can see here, there are many shots missing a single target, so this is much better on large enemies and potentially bosses such as like the Eye of Cthulhu and the Eater of Worlds. So, realistically against single targets, this doesn't deal that much DPS because it you know, misses the target a lot, but however, it is comfortable in its DPS against multiple targets. Moving on to the other pre-hard mode weapon, we have the Vampire Frog Staff, which as you can see, summons a little Vampire Frog to fight for you. Now, this is one of the earliest summoner weapons you can get in-game, getting it before any boss, I would say it's probably a similar tier to the Slime Staff, and it drops from either of the two pre-hard mode Blood Moon fishing enemies. So what works in this weapon's favour is that the summon can deal piercing damage with its tongue, which sort of fires out like a spear, and this is really good against uh, group enemies, such as the Goblin Army, etc, etc from there. Um, I was having issues when first using this weapon where it would remove the damage from another weapon uh, to focus on the frog's damage that was dealt. So that could be considered a bit of an issue if that's not patched. But yeah, as you can see here, uh, it deals a small amount of damage. And my only issue with this weapon is that it's quite difficult to get um, to justify aiming to get it. Because it has quite a low drop rate. And by that point, you know, after two or three blood moons, uh, trying to farm this thing, you may have gone well past the stage where it's actually viable. Moving on, we have the Hemorrhax, which is a drop from Hemogoblin Sharks and Blood Eels. This is a hard mode Hamax, and basically it's, it's alright. It, it's not functional very well as a weapon, but it's a pretty good hammer and axe. It'll chop down stuff and hammer back walls very fast. Also, if you are in hard mode, it will 
smash demon altars if you want something that does that. So you can see it take out a demon altar here. Um, other than that, nothing super special about this item. Each of the three hard mode fishing enemies have their own unique weapon that they drop. And I will begin with the Bloodthorn. Now, the Bloodthorn is a magic weapon that drops from the Hemo Goblin Shark, and I would consider this to be probably the weakest of the bunch, unfortunately. It has a very cool attack pattern. Basically, it will aim from where your mouse is, uh, uh, if there is ground nearby. So, it will aim off the ground or any block, uh, if there is no block or ground nearby to your mouse, it will aim from where the character is positioned, facing where your mouse is. And so this means it can be quite good underground because it travels through walls, but it doesn't really deal that much damage um, on a single target especially. I would argue that this weapon is very niche in its usability and I would say it's definitely just for mining and when you're underground for the most part. Uh, with that being said, it has extremely weak knockback of 1, a use of 20 mana per attack, and a use time of 21, so it is quite fast. Moving on to the melee weapon dropping from the Blood Eels, which is the Drippler Crippler. Now, this works like any other flail, and you can spin the weapon around, you can extend it out, and let the ball drop but something unique about this flail in particular is as you can see it spawns dripler crippler projectiles that will uh i don't know it's sometimes they pierce through enemies and sometimes you can only hit an enemy once with them but either way when you let go of the flail it will summon a rolling projectile ball so I personally think this is a very strong weapon. It is fantastic against early hard mode enemies and of course bosses such as the Destroyer. This weapon's strength is definitely against crowds of enemies or in short range where you can swing around a whole bunch, but it falls short at really long distance enemies because the projectiles don't travel that far and of course aren't that powerful in comparison to the rest of the weapon. Finally, we have the Sanguine Staff, which is a summon staff dropped by the Dread Nautilus. It summons a glowing bat that spawns and resides around the player. The more bats you have, the more they will appear around the player. And interestingly enough, with this attack, it's quite unique. When the bats attack an enemy, they will form an ellipse that travels from beside the player out towards the enemy and then back towards the player before attacking again. So a bat has to do a full rotation before it is able to complete another attack. Now, this gives the illusion that the bat is attacking a lot faster than it really is, um, unless you're very close to the enemy. So this, this staff benefits from the player being positioned closer to the enemy for it to attack more frequently. Uh, this could be considered a disadvantage as a summoner player because the, a lot of the point of summon is that you uh, don't have much defense and you let the staffs do all the damage from a far away distance. However, if you're using a whip and stuff like that, this is actually quite a strong weapon. Uh, similar tier to the blade staff, I would say definitely better than the spider staff in my opinion. And you can also get it quite early in hard mode, so you can use it when you're fighting the mech bosses for the first time. Okay, so those are all the items that you can get from Blood Moon Fishing. I hope you have enjoyed this video, everyone. If you have, please smash like on this video to help it uh, reach sub boxes properly, because like I said at the start, I've been having trouble with that recently. Let me know what videos you would like to see next. I will probably post a poll within the next couple days with some suggestions. And also keep an eye out for my top 5 weapons video for Terraria 1.4, which I am working on at the moment and hopefully will be dropping sooner rather than later. Anyway, like I said, leave a like, comment, subscribe, turn on that notification button. Thank you so much for watching everyone and I will see you all next time. See ya.